Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Let's Play. So, after taking care of Dr. Robotnik in Casino Night, pretty damn easy fight, we are now in Hilltop Zone, and I've got nothing to say about this zone. <laughs> I seriously don't. I will. Hilltop Zone has got to be probably one of my least favorite. Well, actually, no. No. We will be getting to um, other stages in this game that I... <laughs> it's more of an anger factor with the stages that I'm going to be talking about uh, later. But this stage, there's nothing really spectacular about the stage. Pretty much in layman's turns, it's boring. It really is. I When I think of Hilltop Zone, I only think of, you know, look at the color palette. You know, green and light blue. It's, it's nice looking, you know, it's pleasant. Pleasant colors, really cool colors, you know, for those artists out there who know what I'm talking about. It's just, you know, it's it's nice cool colors, and I do love the music here. You know, Hilltop's uh, Zone's uh, track is very f funkish, and I kind of like it. <laughs> it's a really nice track, but as for the stage itself, it's it's just boring. There's, It doesn't really have an identity, I should say. Because, you see, we got these uh, teeter-totters that return uh, back from Starlight Zone in um, Sonic the Hedgehog 1. And then we also have some lava pits that, you know, we encountered in, like, Marble Zone and whatnot. And then we also have these uh, special little gondolas that we go down. I mean, I think that's the only gimmick that this stage ever has is just the gondolas. Because other than that, you know, it's pretty much just like a basic, basic... Um, stage for just a Sonic game in general, or hell, any platformer. I mean, we, you do have every once in a while these uh, areas where the lava rises and whatnot, but it's just, that's it. I can't, I can't really think of anything of a hilltop zone except for the music track and just the color palette. That's it. Uh, it's just, there's nothing spectacular about it. Like I said, it just, it, this stage doesn't have an identity. That's why I can never really to, uh, truly enjoy this stage whatsoever. And, you know, it's very fast, too. You know, I beat it in 2 minutes and 28 seconds. You know, it's not it's not a very long zone to begin with. So, yeah, just nothing really to it. And I want to bring up one point is that in that zone, in Hilltop Zone 1, that is the only zone in Sonic history that has the goalpost all the way to pretty much the right side of the screen. You know, when you go through the, all the other zones, you know, the goalpost is like directly, when you have the screen lined up at the exit, you know, the goalpost is like directly like slabbed down in the middle of the whole screen. But for some reason, that particular zone, they just have it to the right. I, I don't know why. It's not a bother, but I, I'm just curious why that sudden design choice. It's like, they fucked around the editor, like, uh, 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 and then, you know, the mouse slipped, and like, ah, oh, son of a bitch, we put it too far to the right. Uh, yeah, you know what, leave it there. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I don't understand why they had to put that there. In this zone, the only bad nicks I could think of that are new are the, um, the little uh, purple dinosaur or bronchosaurus uh, bannocks that I've encountered a couple of times. Those are the only bots I could think of that are brand new. Well, maybe these uh, maybe these uh, bannocks actually shoot uh, the little spike cones out of their heads too. <laughs> I definitely know that those guys make a return in Sonic Lost World, but you know, other than just the bannocks and the music, that's all I can remember from Hilltop. But anywho, you know, I probably didn't um, explain this uh, last part. I probably did uh, the very first special stage and everything like that. But guys, that's all I'm going to do because I'm not collecting the Chaos Emeralds. <laughs> no way am I collecting the Chaos Emeralds. And besides, you know, I kind of like the bad ending a little bit more than the good ending. What do I mean by that? Well, let me go back to my Chaos Emerald uh, subject. So, you know, if you saw the first LP I did of Sonic the Hedgehog, you know... I didn't get all the Chaos Emeralds. I tried to, but I just couldn't get all six of them. I got, like, 
what, about five or four of them? I was very close, you know, I, I actually put effort into it, because usually when I go through a regular playthrough of uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, I don't bother with the Chaos Emeralds, I just go and have fun. I mean, like I said back in Sonic 1, you know, the only reason you have the Chaos Emeralds is just to get, you know, just a better ending, which technically is not really better, but it's still, you know, somewhat nice, at least. But anywho, it's just that the Chaos Emeralds in here are such a pain in the ass to get. You have to do these half-pipe stages. This is where they are first introduced, and I hate them. You know, I did the first stage, and, you know, it wasn't too bad. You know, the first three is, you know, okay. It's a little bit of memorization, but it's all right. But once you hit special stage four, holy shit. No thank you. <laughs> I hate special stage four. That right there is when the whole special stage just turned into a damn memory game, and I just don't like that. And also, the controls of the half-pipe are just slippery. I never liked the half-pipe uh, special stages ever, and I hate that Dimps keeps bringing them back over and over and over again. I just... Ugh. They brought them back in, you know, <laughs> Sonic uh, Colors for the DS, Sonic Rush, um, Sonic 4 Episode 2. Just... Why? Why do they need to bring them back? And then, you know, you have the full pipe stages from, you know, from Sonic Heroes, and that's even worse, but that's more of control than just design. Well, actually, it's both control and design, <laughs> so that shit's on my statement. But just, I, uh, you know, this is actually the first game where, you know, we have seven Chaos Emeralds now, and Sonic actually, you know, turns to Super Sonic if you collect, you know, all seven Chaos Emeralds and collect 50 rings, and you can turn into him anytime you want. It's a nice little thing to have, but it's just, it, honestly, I love playing a Super Sonic, don't get me wrong, I love playing Super Sonic in the old classic Sonic games, but just, the effort you have to put just to get those Chaos Emeralds, no thank you. God, it's just, no thanks. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I feel better with the bad ending, and the bad ending is just that, you know, uh, you'll see in a moment. Tails and Sonic, you know, have a bit of a bonding moment. You know, I find that better than, you know, Super Sonic, you know, getting off, you know, wherever we're going to in the final part. Uh, who knows? But it just... I can never... No, thank you. Just... If I really want Super Sonic that bad, then I'll try to put my effort to it. But, yeah. I really don't want to get him. So, enough about that. Um... <laughs> There's probably another subject that um, I would like to go over as well, too, about uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, is that you guys have noticed that I took Tails with me. Let me say this, is when when, pe uh, when people usually play Sonic the Hedgehog 2, they never take Tails with them. Why? Because, well, <laughs> during my ramblings in Hilltop Zone uh, 2, you probably saw the boss. The boss is pretty simple, you know? He's just... He kind of reminds me of a combination between, um, actually, no, scratch that. Oh, okay, never mind. That also, uh, shits on the statement I said earlier that it's the only zone that plays it far to the right, but I guess not. <laughs> uh, this game loves to prove me wrong. But, going back to my whole, uh, bringing Tails along is that nobody likes to bring Tails along. When I did, a uh, Hilltop Zone Act 2 with the boss... You know, everything's going well, you know, he's popping out from the lava, and all you just need to do is bounce on him. The problem is, is that Tails, even though he's at AI, he could still technically hit Robotnik. And every time you hit Robotnik, you know, he has invisibility frames and whatnot, I mean, he'll always have that. And then, there are times where Tails can hit, can hit him. And sometimes, you can forget about that, and when you try to go in for another hit, you completely forgot that Robotnik has invincibility frames, so guess what? You'll clip right through the bastard. And depending on what stage hazard is there, could cause you to either fall into lava or fall into a pit. Let's take Chemical Plant Zone's boss, for example. He is shooting, or he's flying around, you know, he's dropping oil buds and everything like that, and where he's positioned is where these platforms, uh, they stay up and then they just, you know... Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm actually showing off the uh, pit, the worst uh, trap in Sonic history, because if you're supersonic and you're stuck down there, holy shit, you're going to be down there for a long time. Even with regular Sonic, it's horrible, because if you have a shit ton of rings, 
you're going to keep catching them, and you're just going to keep catching them and losing them, catching them and losing them. It's the worst, it's the most dickish uh, pit that they ever created. It's just a pit with just spikes at the bottom. That's it, but it's, uh, until you get trapped there your very first time, you'll know how horrible it is. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, it is, it's bad. It really is bad. But just going back to the whole Tails subject is that, you know, Tails can hit him and then he's in his invincibility form and whatnot, or his invincibility frames. And since there's those platforms that, you know, eventually drop and make a bombless pit, if Tails hits him and you go in for another hit, you'll forget that he has invincibility frames, fall through him, and fall into the bombless pit. Tails can screw you over a lot in this game, and that's why not a lot of people bring Tails with them when they play Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It's been forever. Since I brought uh, Tails with me in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Usually I just pick Sonic. As you know, I demonstrated at the very beginning of part 1. That you can choose uh, which character you want to be. You know, you want to bring Sonic and Tails. Just Sonic alone. And you can play as Tails alone if you want. But, you know, Tails is not really different. He won't get his little attributes until Sonic 3 and Knuckles. But, you know, it's stuff like that when he actually gets the last hit. You know, that's actually pretty nice. And it can come in handy sometimes, but... You know, it's rare. In here, he mostly screws you over, so you gotta be extra careful with him. My recommendation, don't bring Tails with you. Just play as Sonic alone. Even if you don't bring Tails with you, it doesn't affect the ending whatsoever or the overall story of this game. It just doesn't do anything. You know, Tails will show up at the very end and whatnot. And hell, you, he, you, he still shows up in uh, one uh, later stage that we'll have to go through when we have to ride on uh, the tornado. You know, Sonic's plane, but... I, I, it's, it's Sonic's plane now, but I'm thinking Tails maybe gains, uh, yeah, sorry, gains ownership of it later, I think. But just, you know, just don't bring Tails along with you. He'll obviously screw you over a lot. He doesn't become as helpful as in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, so <laughs> gotta have to wait a couple of games in order for him to actually, you know, prove useful. So, yeah, just I just brought Tails along for this one time because, you know, I'm thinking, eh, why not? I could have easily just done a Sonic-only run, but, eh, maybe I'll do a Sonic-only run for the NBG comms. Anywho, Mystic Cave Zone is pretty much the zone that we just completed. <laughs> I know, I'm terrible at this exposition shit, aren't I? <laughs> but with Mystic Caves, I do love the design of it, the color palettes, and, you know, just the overall just art look of it, I mean, the design, it's just, it's, it's, it's great stuff, you know, you know, that's all I can say, I also love the music track so much, and, yeah, the boss, piss easy, you know, just be careful of the drills and whatnot, and the things falling from the ceiling, and now we're in ocean, or, uh, ocean, oil ocean zone, and this place has a lot of dickishly placed, uh, traps and whatnot, and sometimes some dickishly placed badniks. Like, you'll have those seahorses that, you know, spit out at you. And obviously, well, they don't really cause that much of an issue with me. But with most people, they hate them. And frank frankly, to tell you the truth, I don't really have that much of a problem with them. I mean, there are times that I do get uh, blindsided and get hit by them. But, you know, <laughs> they're not as worse as the th unholy threesome that will come in Metropolis Zone. And it's funny too because Metropolis Zone is after this zone and I hate Metropolis Zone. But once we get to it, I will explain it in full detail. I'm not gonna give you the very, very long version. Like I'm not gonna go my whole life story about it, but <laughs> I will definitely tell you why Metropolis Zone is my least favorite. I love the design of it. You know, the music's good, but just wait. Just wait for the holy rage I'll give that stage. But with Oil Ocean, you know, just with some bad nicks that can blindside you, you know, the only issue that you could ever have with this stage is probably wondering where you need to go because this stage isn't too sure how to tell you that, oh, you need to go this way or you need to go that way. I mean, you have to figure this out yourself. But I think in Zone 2, I get kind of a little sidetracked because I kind of lost of where I need to go. Mostly, if you go through these um, special cannons that, you know, shoot you all around the stage and whatnot, you're pretty much going in the right direction. Damn it, that was my fault. <laughs> 
I didn't jump in time. And I also have these fans here that'll try to, you know, blow you away. And there's also ones that could, you know, levitate you to get across. Because you don't want to fall into the, you know, the oil ocean. Hence the name of the stage. Because it can, it can be hard to get out of the, the gunk sometimes. It really can be. Or you have to backtrack a very long way just so you could get out. And you'll just have to go through that whole section again. It's... It's, it's not worth it, so just try to stay out of the muck as possible. See, they do stuff like that, like put the spring right there to blow you back, so thinking that, huh, we put a crumbling bridge right there, so we're going to have the spring push you back so you can fall into the gunk. And it didn't work, but, you know, <laughs> that's just how the design was back in the Sonic games, and, yeah, you know, I enjoyed it. This game was uh, definitely a big part of my childhood, so, you know, what could I say? It definitely has a big place in my heart. Because I will say this, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, if if there's one game that people probably played in the classic series, it's Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is very popular. I mean, with Sonic the Hedgehog 1, you know, we have it all over the place. I mean, it's it's everywhere, like on almost every gaming console. And just... <laughs> uh, that's why a lot of people, you know, know Sonic more, because of those reasons. I heard that they're also supposed to, uh, the people who did, uh, the, uh, Sonic CD for the PSN and the Xbox Live Arcade, and also did, uh, the redesign of, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog on the iOS system, is supposed to do a redesign of Sonic, uh, the Hedgehog 2 on the iOS as well. I'm not too sure when that's coming out. I heard it was coming out, like, this November, but I haven't seen anything about it, so I have no idea what's going on. Maybe... It's on a different date. Maybe they're taking their time. Oh well, I I could I can wait. I mean, the people who are doing it is uh, a company called uh, Christian Whitehead. I don't know if that is one uh, the name of the guy and his development team, or that's just the development team's name. I'm not too sure, but you know, could be named after the leader, could be named after something. I don't know, but I'm loving what they're doing to the classic series. They are doing such great things, like. Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the iOS, you know, even though I'm not a big fan of touchscreen controls in video games, I really am not. Or at least with touchscreen um, games to begin with. It's just, I, I love Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the iOS. It's not only that you have Sonic, you also have Tails, you have Knuckles. It, it, the, the, the engine has been redefined, you know, we don't have that stupid, you know, spike glitch that happen, you know, when you get hit and when you're in invisibility frames, you know, if you land on spikes, you'll get hit again. That doesn't happen. It's, ugh, i loving what Christian Whitehead's doing, and honestly, I wish those guys were the ones who are working on Sonic the Hedgehog 4, not Dimps. I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1 wasn't too bad, and t uh, Episode 2 was good, but it just didn't really do anything new, and it just seems like a rehash, because with me, like, the transition from Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, and 3 and Knuckles was, there were some pretty big leaps, you know? The games just got better and better and better, and I expect that with Sonic the Hedgehog 4, but honestly, they don't do that with Sonic the Hedgehog 4. Dimps is not giving, you know, the Sonic the Hedgehog classic treatment that I think it deserves, and I think Christian Whitehead Company is able to do that a lot better than Dimps. But we won't, we'll never, uh, we won't, no, until episode 3 comes out, if there's another episode 3, because, you know, I heard that, you know, if episode 2 doesn't do v well in sales, you know, they won't produce episode 3, and, you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass, you know, it, they left episode 2 on a cliffhanger. If I ever get into, you know, the episode 2 Let's Play, which I eventually will, because I am going to do all the classic Sonic games, and even though, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, no, sorry, people. Just a verbal tick of mine, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, see, there it goes again. I'm going to be doing the classic series. And even though they're part of the modern days of Sonic, you know, they're still technically part of the classic series, I guess. So, going to have to do them eventually. See, this is definitely another boss that Tails can screw you over because I want to go in for, like, a couple hits. Like, if I'm playing Sonic by himself, I can get about three hits on this boss before he sinks back into the uh, the oil. But no, not in here. Uh, that was my fault. <laughs> I, I guess I panicked or something like that. But Tails, 
he could get stuck in the oil there and you know when you jump he jumps and then if he hits robotnik then he has invincibility frames and if you try to go in to hit him it'll just fall right through him it just it's a pain in the ass don't bring tails that is the uh that's the piece of advice of the day. That's the moral of the story. Just don't bring Tails with you in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Just play as Sonic or hell, even just play as Tails. It doesn't matter. Just don't have them both together. <laughs> uh, hilarity can ensure. Well, I'm not too sure if hilarity would ensure, but a lot of bullshit will happen, that's for sure. So, just, yeah, loving what Christian Whitehead's doing with the uh, classic Sonic series. They, the first uh, thing they ever did was uh, Sonic CD on the PSN and Xbox Live uh, arcade, because I did like the original Sonic CD, but it had a lot of issues, like collision detection. Like, the collision detection in Sonic CD, my god, it was, it was pretty bad. And also, the special stages, they had so much slowdown to them where, where they were just almost unplayable. But here comes Christian Whitehead with Sonic CD, which is, uh... Uh, the PSN and Xbox Live one that, uh, oh god, makes me more in love with the game. You know, they fix the collision detection, you know, the special stages run at a very smooth, uh, frames. It just, uh, god, I could gush about that game all day. I mean, I really do enjoy that port. That port alone is what makes me, you know, fall in love more with, uh, Sonic CD. And there's other stuff they put in there too, but like I said, after Sonic the Hedgehog 2 here, I will be doing uh, Sonic CD, you know, for filler LPs until I get more things of uh, Condemned and, you know, Dead Space, you know, edited and whatnot. So I can't really say anything much about this boss except for he comes in a submarine and all you just need to do is bounce on him like that. And after every time he sinks, he'll throw this claw at you and then he'll have this laser. And it's all about your reflexes if you want to dodge his laser. I'll mostly try to shoot it where your general location is. Like that one, you could, you know, just stand there. The one in the middle, you know, you have to jump over, and then he'll sometimes shoot the platforms, which will, you know, cause this blue flames to happen. See, stuff like that with tails, you know, I'm fine with that, but that's, that's all luck, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's never really anything special, you know? You don't get that many... <sighs> Good luck chances with Tails. Usually screws me over in the end. But that's Oil Ocean, everybody. So, tomorrow, that's where it ends. We're going to be doing the final part of the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 LP. So, until tomorrow, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.